Alright, what's up everybody? How's it going? How's it going? Welcome to the party. Welcome to Saturday Speed Modeling. I hope that the audio is good for everyone. Uh, if anything sounds out of line, let me know if the volume is too loud, if the music is too loud, if the volume's too low, anything like that. Just let me know. Uh, but I think we're pretty close here to those magical numbers. Um, I just want to uh, also... In a moment, welcome our special guest. I can see him in the chat here saying hello. So we're going to have a special kind of surprise guest today. Uh, very excited to introduce him. But I want to make sure everybody has time for the modeling challenge today because we got some uh, kind of tricky modeling challenges going today. So in just a moment, we'll introduce our special guest. But for now, let's jump into the Model Monday Live challenges, which we're doing on Saturdays right now because we're in Season 3, Saturday Speed Modeling. Uh, let's get into it here. Here's your materials. If you're here for the first time, be sure to take a screen capture of these materials so that you understand what templates you should be using. These are the default materials in SolidWorks, but maybe if you're here using a different CAD system, you uh, will uh, need to create some custom materials that have the densities that are shown here. So take a screen capture of this. I'll show this screen again in just a moment if you missed it, uh, but take a screen capture of this and it is April, so we are doing April clean sweeps, which means you can win all three points. And what we're talking about is winning points here to get onto a leaderboard. So to win these points, what you're going to need is a YouTube chat login, and you're going to need a 3D CAD system that can input density and output mass. I'm going to show you a 2D print, and it's going to be up to you to turn that into a 3D model, apply the appropriate material, and then type in the mass into the chat. The first person to type that incorrectly in the chat will be declared the winner. So uh, with that, I just want to cover a couple of quick rules. These quick rules are, number one, this is meant to be fun and good-spirited. And number two, I will and have make a mistake on some of the prints. Uh, and then when that happens, what we do is we just work together, we plow through it, we make sure that uh, everybody is feeling happy at the end of the day. But it will happen from time to time. And if you're not good with that, if you're the type of person that's like, it needs to all be perfect every time, and uh, I can't stand any any deviation from that concept. Well, then maybe this isn't the contest for you. Maybe it's better just to kind of sit out, hang out. Uh, but if you're good with that, then I think you are in the right place, and we are ready to move on now to our three challenges today. Uh, the points are live, and it is April, so you can win all three. And so what that means is that you can actually earn a spot on the leaderboard, and the top eight people qualify for the Summer 2021 Tournament. This leaderboard can be found at TwoTallToby.com on the tab that says Model Monday Live, and this is what the leaderboard looks like as of this morning. So you can see that once you get four points, you are locked in, you are officially in the tournament. And really, uh, some of the other people who are up there, like uh, Parjetter W and Tim Z, I mean, these, these uh, users have three points. They're not really going to get dethroned here uh, from from their points. So, you know, I think that uh, those those uh, people can also kind of uh, rest assured that they're in it, but you can still compete. You can get up to four points and get locked into this tournament. Uh, so, uh, so let's go on here. I see uh, three one six seven is asking for a little bit of clarity. I think we'll address that in just a moment. Three one six seven. Um, so let's go on here and take a look again. These are your default materials that we're going to be using. Same materials we've been using for over a year now. Uh, shout out to Parjetter W. That's correct. I did get the spelling correct now. Uh, glad that you noticed that, my man. 
All right, so let's go on here to the uh, first challenge today. I'm going to flip over to full screen so that you guys can see this thing in full screen. And what you're going to do is as soon as this goes live, you are going to uh, take this 2D print and try to turn it into a 3D model. And the first person to get it correct, to type in the mask correctly in the chat, will be declared the winner. Here we go. I see what 3167 is saying is, is the first person to type the mask in correctly or is the first person to type the mass incorrectly? That's a, that's a pretty good point of clarity there. Uh, good call, 3167. Here we go. Three, 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 uh, one, six, seven, asking the deep and thought-provoking questions, as always. This first model here is called Clevis. It is uh, 210407, so it's the seventh model that we've done in the month of April. And we are going to go live with the challenge in three, two, one, go. So if you're here for the first time, what you're going to want to do is take a screen capture of this. Let me just resize this to get this a little bit more in frame. There we go. You're going to want to take a screen capture of this, uh, put it on your second monitor so you can continue working on it while we uh, talk with our special guest. But you can see that this model is called Clevis. One thing that I will point out to everyone is that there is a centerline symmetry looking at this model from the right side view, but not looking at this model from the front view. So take your screen capture and notice that you have centerline symmetry on the right side view, but not on the front or top views. So just be aware of that. That's the only clue I'm going to give you on this one. I think everything else you need is there. Uh, we're looking for the mass of this part in x dot xx grams. I'm going to leave this up there for about 10 more seconds, and uh, then we are going to introduce our special guest who... I am so excited to talk to you. an old friend, an old friend of the show, an old friend in life. We've been through so much together, and I can't wait to uh, get him back on camera. We're going to do that in just a moment. All right, here we go. Let's uh, let me flip back here to the cameras. Uh, I'm going to introduce our special guest here. Uh, just a reminder, uh, real quick, or sorry, before I introduce a special guest, just a quick reminder here uh, that once you get four points, you are locked in. So you can see that Ivan is locked in. Uh, Tom is also locked in, I think. Uh, once you get those four points, you're locked in. And I just want to throw this slide up. I'll throw this up again in a little bit. So if you're competing, don't worry about it too much right at the moment. But uh, the uh, the following three people are confirmed in the tournament. Ivan L., Rodrigo A., and Parjitra W. Uh, have all reached out to me and have confirmed that they are ready to go, that they're good to go for May 1st. So uh, if you're not on this list, if you're one of the names I've got uh, circled there in red, or if you make your way onto the leaderboard today, just make sure that you send me a message. You can get in touch with me on the Tutal Toby website. Just go over to the contact form and send me a message so that I know that you're good for May 1st, and then I can start emailing you uh, info on on the logistics, how you're going to get logged into the tournament, uh, what you can expect during the tournament, answer any questions you have, all that stuff. So just send me a message if you're on that board. Uh, make sure that you are ready to go for May 1st, and I'll be sure to stay in touch with you. With that being said, I am super excited to introduce our special guest. He's been on SolidWorks Live. He has been interviewed at the SolidWorks World Conferences. Uh, he's an old friend of the show. I'm going to flip over to your webcam. If everybody could, please give a warm welcome to Sean O'Neill. Sean, how are you doing today? <laughs> good, Toby. I like it. I like the screenshot. It looks like I'm like looking to grab like a huge monitor from a screen. Like, give it to me. It's mine. <laughs> I love it, man. That uh, that shot gets me like I'm I'm like pumped. It looks like you're about to talk about something really exciting. Yeah, yeah. No, that was a uh, that was a super. Um, a super exciting interview um you know through the experience role especially when you're in person it's like you're just you're just totally jacked uh, especially talking to jeremy regnaris right right um he gets he gets the crowd crowd bumping great guy always. great guy but great All to be right. here yeah well great to have you here sean uh you've been a guest on the show many times before uh you're uh you're the face of the SolidWorks community, uh, you oh, know, you, you've done so much with the SolidWorks community. I'm excited to talk to you about all of those things. But before we get into that, I thought it might be fun for us to just kind of go through the chat, uh, give some people some shout outs. Maybe there's some people that you know as well. So I'm going to flip over to an overlay here that I've got where uh, we are both on on screen and I've got the PowerPoint on screen also. And I'm just going to move the chat over here onto the PowerPoint. I'm going to leave you up there because uh, I just think you look so good in that picture. But I'm going to just kind of move the chat <laughs> over here and we can roll through and say hello to some people, give some people some proper shout outs. So you can see here that the very first person who uh, who logged in and said hello in the 
the chat was Ed. So what's up, Ed? Thanks a lot for tuning in. Ed was up, as you, Ed? As, as you guys may or may not know, Sean was my co-commentator during the tournament last year, uh, and Ed was one of the competitors in that tournament. So it's so great to see him uh, in here that. once again. Crush I remember it. that. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so funny. Like um, I know I know a lot of you obviously in the, in the chat, but you know even for those of you who I don't know. Um, you know, I, I remember I remember the avatars, which is really funny. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. It's all I can't wait to see what the people come up with this year because uh, they yeah. they just keep getting better every tournament. And uh, Rodrigo <laughs> Rodrigo goes by the uh, screen handle D four R K. So maybe you've seen him in the message boards. Uh, but Rodrigo is here as well, and Ano is here. What's up, Ano? Thanks for tuning in. And the one and only Eric Beatty. He was a guest on the show last week. Uh, what's up, Eric? Thanks a lot for tuning in today. That guy. We got Table 3-6 in here. We got Theodore C., uh, my friend from Greece. We got Tim Z., current Model Mania world champion from the World Conference, uh, in here competing once again today. And 3167, I don't know if you remember, Sean, but at the World Conference this year, since it was virtual, uh, 3167 actually got featured on webcam. Uh, the guy, Josh, who was doing the uh, two-bit circus, he invited 3167 to come on webcam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was, that was too good. It was so good. That was, dur that was during the... Oh, man, Josh. Man, that, that guy. I, like, he... Wait, so that was... I think that was... Was that during the uh, the Reddit meetup? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yep, during the Reddit oh, meetup. Oh, man. Just yes. so good. Like, I, I think I think you and I, and I feel like a lot of people in the chat, too, like, we just, we just love... Uh, we just love kind of doing new things and, and doing kind of potentially dicey things. Yeah. You know, like you open it up to Reddit, like Sawrush Reddit's great, but like, obviously there's so many people on there. You have no idea what's going to happen. You and then, but that was their idea, by the way, behind the scenes. Uh, that's something that 2-Bit Circus will do. They'll basically, um, they'll, they'll just sort of pick someone random in the chat uh, or in the uh, the trivia meetup and they'll just ask them to sort of pop in on, on webcam. So you, so you, a lot of times you don't even expect it, right? So you're just looking and you get this prompt on your screen that says like, hey, we'd like to invite you to share your webcam and like take part in this like mini challenge or whatever. I think you told them like, get something interesting. Yeah, get something house. interesting. Yeah, something like, something like kind of general, but um, uh, but yeah, no, that was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was so funny, yeah. And then and then uh, 3167 got like uh, food. And then I remember he was typing in the chat like while he was competing it was just it was just clutch all around i loved it it was so good i love that kind of stuff yeah <laughs> so anyhow uh, so, uh but we got a lot more people in here we gotta say hi to so what's up patty thanks for tuning in again what's up raj how you doing welcome welcome uh we got david here uh he's been in the past few really the past few months so kind of becoming an old friend of the show and uh victor is here of course if anybody's in the chat who's here for the first time please let us know uh the community would love to welcome you uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. And Victor is here as well. What's up, Victor? I, I think this might be a new name. This might be Victor's first time in here. So what's up, Victor? And, uh, of course, Sean O'Neill, our special guest today, is also in the chat, manning the chat. That's a pro move. And Gerben is here. What's up, Gerben? <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. And Tamperor Station, very old friend of the show, uh, tuning in once again. Love it. Uh, let's see here. And we got Amal Thomas. What's up, Amal? Thanks for tuning in. Hope you're enjoying the show so far. Hope you're enjoying the challenge. Uh, we got Projector W, uh, Superstar over on the Discord. There is a non-official SolidWorks Discord that I hang out on, and I see Parge in there all the time. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, I didn't see anybody this week. I was actually offline a lot of the week this week. So a uh, little screen time for a little screen break, you know, once in a while. Absolutely. Uh, Simran is here. What's up, Simran? Thanks for tuning in. Welcome, welcome. And uh, Moldolci, another competitor from last year Moldolci. from the tournament we did. And he's been rocking it. Uh, I think Moldolci started a users group in Germany. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I was talking to our, our friend, uh, our friend Dan Wagner. And, and Moldolci is in the Champions program as well. And, um, you know, Dan, Dan was kind of just sharing that, you know, Moldolci here was, was in an onboarding for his, his new user groups. And that's, that's super exciting. I see there's two different Moldolci accounts here, but I got to assume that's the same person. I mean, well, no, I noticed, uh, I noticed with Delci, you didn't, you, you're attracted to the first matches. I think, um, like a lot of us, you, you probably have like one YouTube account used for <laughs> one thing and then one used for too tall Toby. Yeah. So I, so I, I was too quick on the draw. I mentioned you before, uh, before you <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Matthew Fall is here as well. What's up, Matthew? Thanks for tuning in. Another old friend of the show. So great to see you in here. Let's see what else we got here. We got some new people in here too. I think Garlic Trader has been in here the past couple of weeks. I love that screen name, Garlic Trader. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's something I can get get on board with for sure. 
And uh, uh, Sally is here today. What's up, Sally? Thanks for tuning in. First time. Well, welcome, welcome. Uh, so excited to see you in here. And let's see who else we got in here. We got, make sure I didn't miss anybody. Hopefully I didn't miss anybody. If I did, I'll make sure I get you. All right. I think we're pretty much caught up here. Awesome. So, Sean, man, I mean, you know a lot of these people too, huh? Yeah, absolutely. No, it's always it's always good to jump on. It, it's funny. Last time, last time I was on here, um, I love to see. You know, part of it is is just I just love to see things grow uh, when they're when they're quality things like your your channel. Um, <laughs> but I, I think uh, you know, just thinking back, right? It's like, and part of it's like you know, I I, I work with a lot of you know YouTube creators just as part of our, my job here at SolidWorks and seeing channels grow is is always great. So I was thinking back to to what November or, or so. Uh, last time, last time, I guess I was, I was on for this particular, uh, type of event. And, um, I, I guess subscriber wise, you were, you were in the hundreds, right? You were, you were not, you had not yet eclipsed a thousand. It sounds that sounds about right? right. Yep. Yeah. It's just so funny how, like, if you look at how channels grow, it isn't this like purely linear thing. Um, you know, now you're at over 2000. So that's, that's super cool to see. And it's super cool to see, obviously you know, all these names that, um, you know, we knew well, but then like still, like you see new names popping in. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very, uh, uh, I guess gratifying maybe is the word or, uh, satisfying, or I don't know what the word is. I just love, <laughs> I love this type of thing. I love, you know, getting the crew together. It almost feels like a digital users group, you know, where it's a lot of, uh, the same people, you know, but there's also a lot of new people that kind of hop in and hop out. And so that's, uh, that's all I could ask for. And I'm so glad that it has matured to the point that it's at today. It's so funny. I was talking to, I was actually talking to someone from solid professor, uh, yesterday, just about like how, you know, even if you think about how, like when user groups were created, um, you know, 20, 20 odd years ago, um, and how you used to sort of be able to advertise that, you know, it was, it was word of mouth. You might put something on like a bulletin board, like a physical uh, bulletin board, yeah, physical bulletin board, right. Yeah. Uh, you know, you might kind of, uh, you know, recruit someone from your job or something, um, to, to, to go along with you. Um, now, like, you know, there's so many more ways to, to sort of do that. Like these sort of crazy network effects. Do you think user groups like meet up, right? Meet up people can, people in, in the meetup.com network can find out, you know, where a user group is and, you know, hop on even if they have no idea or, or, or at least have never used SOLIDWORKS at all. Um, and here with, with YouTube, it's, it's the same sort of thing. Like you have, we just have access to, to hundreds, thousands, you know, millions, billions of people around the world um, that can come across, you know, through some, some algorithm, you know, your, your content. And suddenly you have no idea how they got here, but they're in the chat <laughs> saying hello. It's insane. Yeah, it is wild. Um, and it is something that, you know, I'm so thankful that we have all these new ways to reach out to people now, you know, and yeah. uh, like I was on the um, I saw on LinkedIn during the week, there was uh, like a, it was called 2D sketching tips and tricks. And it was from a Philippines users group. And mm. I clicked into it and I was like, this is amazing. You know, it's like you said, it's totally random. Just something I saw on LinkedIn. And it was like 2D sketching tips and tricks. And it was super rapid fire. It was like <laughs> one, it was like one tip per minute and just nonstop, like, brah, 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 like all these, like, and just sketching, just like, here's how to sketch something. Here's, here's exercise number one. Here's how to sketch it. It was so good. And it was so random that I happened to click into it. And uh, I'm so, I'm so glad that I did, but just to your point, like you can kind of come across these different, uh, you know, you do a, a basic search or you just even just like in this case, I'm just looking through LinkedIn or whatever. And then all of a sudden, maybe you meet into a new group, you make some connections there. Maybe you see them at world, you know, and, and now you have like yet another resource that you can go to, to maybe learn a little bit more about this, uh, amazing piece of software, you know, in this case. Yeah. And you can even think about that, right. It's like, you know, when I, when you're mentioning, um, you know, watching super rapid fire 2d sketching tips, um, I remember even like when I first became like a solid SAE and like going to user group meetings, you know, um, you know, in person, which this can still be the case, but if you're going too fast, like there is an anxiety in the crowd because basically it's like, I'm never going to see this again, or I'm not going to be able to play this back right and now, like with these videos, especially stuff that's like recorded and you can kind of see it again and, and stuff like that. Um, you know, there's just such an ability. You can even just play yourself at halftime. So right. you can make like a, a two minute piece of content and just go crazy. Right. 
and yeah. people can play it at a certain speed. It's it's it is intense. And you can you can say you can legitimately say sixty sketching tips in in one minute. <laughs> in one minute, here we go. <laughs> Challenge accepted. I'm gonna try. And yeah, do and it. you're not lying. Yeah. And you know, some people like that stuff. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, that's the other thing is that there's different formats that different people like. I see Kirby's in the chat. Shout out to Kirby. Uh, when In talking to him in the past, he has told me that he, what he really likes is the videos where there's no talking and it's just somebody building something. Sometimes it's time-lapsed, you know, so, like, they'll just go through and build a model a car in SolidWorks. And, you know, maybe it took them eight hours, but they'll play it back in, like, one hour. And he really enjoys watching those. He says he really can can absorb that type of information and that's a great format for him and for me like i don't like that as much i like it more when it's like a little bit more you know, similar to the style that i use where like i'll take one feature and kind of deep dive on that feature and really explain what that one feature does but when i'm done i just have like a fillet <laughs> like and that's it. I spent <laughs> 10 minutes talking about a fillet and i just have like one fillet but i just think it's really cool the way you can do like uh continuous curvature or something like that with the fillet um, mm -hmm. And so you really have that that flexibility to kind of go out and figure out what works for you and then just, you know, just consume as much of that content as possible. Yeah, I think we take for granted sometimes there's how much, you know, just having, um, you know, immediately available, sort of quickly available content and, and people, um, you know, just how much that's really changed things, um, I think, for, for the better. It happens so quickly um, and it's such a mainstay that, I, again, like I just think... It, it's it's so funny to look back to not too long ago when like a lot of the stuff just did not exist, including your channel, which is which is amazing. Well, I thank you, and uh, I I agree. I mean, it's like what you were saying when you were saying you know you think about how users groups used to be. Like when I started using SolidWorks, uh, I went to this community college where we had the user group meetings and. I became the treasurer of the of the user group uh, for you know just because nobody else put up their hand. But like thinking about how that was advertised back then, you know, and it's exactly to your point. It's like, how did we even get the word out about that? Like you just would have to kind of e it really was email campaigns. That was pretty much it. Well, that's yeah, that's true, right? I forgot I didn't mention that. Um, yeah. The email email is still around and that's that right it was it was email yeah. um but um an email still like super it has been really resilient technology like <laughs> it's still it's everyone oh, everyone's it. been trashing it for like 30 years like it sucks it's the worst but like yeah we still use it and it's still like a really good way to you know let people know about stuff i just um, got done but, reading a book uh and yeah. in the book the the younger protagonist talked about how he has this older uh, friend who was a literary professor and he still writes emails the way he would write letters so he'd be like uh dear you know thomas i hope this message finds you well you know and then like goes through and describe like I, I would like to meet with you for lunch next week at so and so a time sincerely professor buckingham or you know, whoever <laughs> whatever the character's name was and uh a lot of times what i do is i'll post messages on message boards in email format so i'll be like hi everyone like i get to the end of the message i sign it like from too tall toby and everybody's like we kind of know who it is like your name is right there you really don't have to be this formal but i just like it's letting, freaking you know. it's so bad i i like I, I don't know if you can um there's uh there's an example i was i was thinking of recently i'm gonna let me try to let me well, try i'm gonna to let you bring it. that up but before you do i'm gonna yeah, actually yeah, go flip ahead, go back ahead, to the contest because we got two more challenges today we got lots of points up for grab i'm gonna leave you on the screen though okay on your webcam so you and i'll both be kind of looking through this powerpoint <laughs> here and uh let's take a look here at this challenge so this challenge was called clevis this was a model that was created in plain carbon steel uh, you can see the 2d print here it's uh uh, not exactly symmetric. It's symmetrical on the one side view, but you can see there's a, this counter bore here that's only on the one side. So that's certainly going to affect what the total mass of this model is. So let me roll back here in the chat and see what kinds of answers we got on this uh, on this challenge. So I'm just going to roll back up here a little bit. We'll see what the first answer was that came in. We'll see if it came in correctly or if it was incorrectly typed or calculated <laughs> all right and so it looks like the very first answer that came in here was from our good friend Gervin swart uh welcome again Gervin. Uh, a little bit of a newer member to the show but i've uh, been here for the past few weeks uh, so glad to see you in here 616 grams is the very first answer that came in but not necessarily the correct answer because we can see parjetter w right behind Gervin here with 618.4 now we are rounding to the nearest whole gram here so we'll call that 618 and then 3167 right behind him at 602.4 so uh 
So uh, we got a few different answers coming in, quite a variety of answers. We see Rodrigo here, D4RK, coming in with 615.9. So again, we round that up to 616, which actually matches Gerben here. So we have, you know, basically two answers that are the same. Pargitter coming in, oh, revising his answer to 616. Uh, Tim Z coming in with 616 as well. Uh, looks like we're getting some convergence here on the answer. Ed, 616. Theodore C, 616. Nicely done, nicely done. Pargitter uh, saying good game to Gerben. Uh, Gunpowder Green, newer friend of the show. What's up, Gunpowder Green? Love that screen name. Coming in here with 616 as well. Let's see what else we got in here. All righty. Okay, 3167 coming in with 616. Nicely done. Uh, Eric talking about sending out faxes. Wow. <laughs> Sending out. That. What's fax short for? Is it like FASA, FASA meal or something? Do you know? I don't, I don't know. I feel like it's question. short for something. If you guys know that, type that into the chat. That can be our little bonus. I feel like Eric might know. Eric knows but everything. Eric somehow. does know a lot about ancient technology. <laughs> Just oh. everything. Hey, oh, shots fired. <laughs> Uh, and Kirby, okay, Kirby asking what a fax is. All right, awesome. So sending out faxes to get the uh, users uh, on board for the user group meetings. Anno coming in here with 616. Nicely done, Anno. Raj coming in with 601.3. Nicely done, Raj. And Patty coming in 618.9. So we'll call that 619. Kirby, of course, uh, going with 420 grams. Always a solid answer, Kirby. Uh, can't go wrong with that answer. <laughs> Uh, in fact, I think I might just give Kirby the point. Just, you know, whatever. I don't care about the rest of the answers. Uh, Patty revising to 596.4. Uh, 3167 says Fast a Meal. Fast a Meal. Pargitter W saying Fast fas a Meal. Fast Il Mill. Fast fac, Simile. Okay. Wow. Pargitter knows uh, my weakness is, well, reading. <laughs> <laughs> you're just you're, you're just good at numbers just good at numbers uh, that works. <laughs> and david coming in with 585.15 let's find out what the correct answer is and who is going to earn the point on this one the Here correct answer to this first challenge is 616 grams so congratulations to uh gerben swart very nicely done getting the correct answer there uh with six 16 let me see here go back up to the top it was uh it was pretty fast yeah here he is gerbin comes in with 616 grams so very nicely done gerbin congratulations uh you have earned the first point of the day today is a day of clean sweeps so you could possibly win all three points today uh keep up the good work and we're gonna put you in there make sure that we get you that point very nicely done i will update the leaderboard after the show today uh make sure that you get in there but with that, let's move on to our next challenge here. So, Sean, I'm going to leave you on camera here as we go through and look at the next challenge. So I uh, uh, just want to remind you guys with Mondays, you know, we always call the show Model Monday Live. For the month of March, I did do uh, Monday night live streams where I went through and solved these challenges that came out on Saturday. So if you want to see the way that I think through these challenges, be sure to check out some of those episodes. I think you'll find that very helpful, especially for uh, if there's any students out there. Um, of course, if everybody could please give a GG to um, give a GG to Gerben for winning that first one. Very nicely done. I already see some GGs coming in. So GG means good game. Good game to Gerben. So nicely done, Gerben. GGG. All right. And let's see here. We got three challenges today. You can win all three. So Gerben, you can definitely win all three. This is what the board looks like currently. Uh, with uh, Gerben being added in here at the bottom, if we have uh, you know a tie, if there's any ties here, then we'll uh, we'll have to figure it out. Maybe we'll do a runoff, or it might just randomly draw people, or it might just be based on who contacts me and says they can do it. I don't know what we'll do. What's up, Chris Nudson? Welcome, welcome. Great to see you in here. So glad you were able to make it today. All right, guys, here we go. Next challenge. Let me go to full screen here. This next challenge is going to be called. SM Latch. SM Latch. 210408. The eighth challenge in the month of April. Three, two, one, go. The challenge is now live. Uh, you can see here, as always, our second challenge in season three is a sheet metal challenge. You don't technically have to do it as sheet metal. Uh, you should be able to get the correct mass either way if you don't happen to have a sheet metal module. Uh, but I would encourage you to do it with sheet metal. I think you can probably get it done faster. I'm going to leave this up on screen here for about 20 more seconds, so be sure to grab a screen capture. 
The general notes are showing that the default wall thickness is 5 millimeters and the default inside bend radius is 5 millimeters. And we can see here uh, that I'm looking for the mass in XXXX grams, plus minus one gram, plain carbon steel for the material. And the model does have symmetry. Kirby coming in with the first answer already. My goodness. Kirby, you might want to revise and look at your uh, significant digits on this challenge. Just a little pro tip there. Uh, on that note, I'm going to just drop in a waypoint here so that I know where we launched this challenge. Call this waypoint hey, two. Zero, zero one seven six. <laughs> that's a, that's a, he should revise the zero <laughs> one seven six grams. That would be clutch. <laughs> Message retracted. Zero one. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna leave this up here uh, while I take one more sip of my coffee, and I'm gonna jump back to our uh, double webcams with the PowerPoint, Sean. Nice. And. Uh, I know you got some stuff to show us. I'm excited to see what you've brought. But before we, <laughs> before <laughs> no, we take a look at that, um, <laughs> before we take a look at that, let me just uh, get in here and make sure. Well, I'm gonna hold. On, I gotta, I gotta just update this chat over here. I didn't realize it was getting cut off so bad. I mean, not so bad, but just a little bad. Wait, what the heck is this one? Though? Get out of here. We're doing some on-the-fly yeah. management here, guys. <laughs> it's all good. Just gonna make that a little tiny bit smaller. And a little tiny bit taller. So, Sean, have you heard about the Too Tall Toby head to head 3D CAD speed run tournament? I have heard about that, uh, but can you, could you tell me more? <laughs> but please tell me more. I want to hear you say it. Yes. So, the uh, head to head, live head to head 3D CAD speed run tournament is. A tournament where we take our top eight people from the leaderboard, we pair them up randomly. Literally, we drew the names from a hat, and we asked them to turn a 2D print into a 3D model live while sharing their screen. Uh, your good friend and mine, Dan Wagner, and I are going to be doing commentary for this. We did this <laughs> last year. You and I did commentary together. It was amazing. Yeah. Uh, maybe you could. Maybe you would even be willing to kind of jump in for a bit. We could have like uh, you, me, and Dan doing commentary for some of this thing. Uh, I yeah, personally we, would love that. Yeah, for sure. Now I'd be open to that. As long, we, can, we can negotiate it. I just need to make sure I have more screen time than Dan. Yep, we'll definitely make sure you have more <laughs> screen time than Dan. We can we can make that happen for sure. Uh, and so our competitors share their screens, and they are willing to uh, let us see kind of how they're thinking through these challenges, how they're using SolidWorks, how their toolbars are set up. Are they using dark mode or not? Very important in uh, being the most efficient CAD user you can be. And uh, after, you know, seeing how they think through a model, it's it's pretty interesting how two different experts can get to the same result using a very different workflow. Yeah, this was this was like my my first um, my first like real realization that this is true. Like Eric just said, ESPN on like this. This is this was like educational esports. Like you watch a basketball game, you watch a football game, a soccer game or something. And, you know, you're seeing, you know, kind of head to head back and forth, whatever. And uh, there was a st same, all the same feelings, right? It's like the anxiety, the, the yeah. pressure. Yeah. Like it was, uh, and I know all hyperbole aside, like I was, I was surprised that I actually felt that way, as I as I had never felt that way about watching people three model. Yeah, it's you know I think putting the clock on, you know I think we've all been in that spot yeah. where you're like, yeah. you're doing any kind of, <laughs> like you know you're playing a board game or something, and the clue is uh, name a basketball player. And as soon as right. the clock comes on, you're like, ah, oh, oh, I can't think of any of them. You know, so it definitely changes the dynamic. So if you guys haven't seen this yet, you can certainly go back and take a look at the replays from last year. But if you want to watch it live, uh, be sure to <laughs> tune in summer 2021, uh, Saturday, May 1st. We're going to get started at the same time, 1500 GMT. Uh, that is 11 o'clock East Coast. And uh, I want to just give a quick shout out here to Kentucky Derby. Uh, KentuckyDerby.com was nice enough to put up a live clock letting us know what the countdown is to May 1st, to the Too Tall Toby tournament. So if you haven't been to KentuckyDerby.com, it's a great website. And they do have a live clock on there letting us know that we are just 14 days away from the Too Tall Toby <laughs> tournament. Uh, it's very nice of them to set up their clock uh, counting down to the Too Tall Toby tournament. And um, yeah, just shout out to KentuckyDerby.com. 
Here's the people who have confirmed with me. Uh, Ivan L., Rodrigo A., and Parjetra W. have sent me a message, have contacted me, said, I'm good to go for May 1st. Here's the names of the people who have not yet contacted me. Uh, just send me a message, you know, uh, send me, go to uh, twotalltoby.com, click on the link that says contact. That'll let you send me a message. Let me know that you're good to go for May 1st, and I will send you some information that we use when we are uh, getting things ready for the tournament. So just send me a message there, contact, I'll send you an email, we'll get everything lined up, get all the logistics ironed out, and we'll be ready to go in just 14 short days. I can't believe how close we are to the tournament. Guys, we have a very special guest today, Sean O'Neill, the founder of the SolidWorks Champions program. So many people always reach out to me. They ask me, they say, Toby, seeing this Champions program, what do I got to do to get in here? And I say, email this guy. And then I send him your email. <laughs> no, it's not. That's exactly what we try to get away from. Like, we, we tried to make a program. And I, I think, you know, the user group network was has been really good about this in the past. And I think... Um, you know, you mentioned Dan, you know, Dan, even in his short time in the role so far, he's already done so much. And one of the things he's done, and I think really, you know, looking back, will probably, I hope will be a hallmark of, you know, what Dan and I, um, kind of let me, were able to do. Let me interrupt you. So just for people maybe who are here uh, for the first time, who aren't familiar with your, your work, uh, you and Dan both work at Dasso Systems SolidWorks and you're both on the community team, right? So Dan, uh, yes. who we've, we've talked about a number of times, Dan is the uh, worldwide global leader manager of the SolidWorks <laughs> Users Group Network. It's a great title. Yes. I, need, I need to get something like that. It's very, yeah, it barely fits on the door to his office. Uh, so Dan is the <laughs> leader of the U SolidWorks Users Group Network worldwide, helps coordinate with the user group leaders, helps make sure that the user group meetings uh, go off well and that the user group leaders have everything they need to be successful, helps start new users groups, et cetera. Uh, you and Dan are on that same are on the same team to do various community SolidWorks community related things. But what do you do on that team? Uh, so yeah, it's a good point. So we we sort of uh, have different responsibilities, different talents, just like any team, right? Like that's that's just how teams generally go. Um, so like you said, Dan runs the the SolidWorks user group network, and what I did with with my role, I guess, is uh, you just generally say we're community managers at SolidWorks is I run, I run two different programs. So one program is the SolidWorks Champions program, which is, you know, I see a lot of, lot of champions here today. Um, and, you know, I always try to start off with, I think something that, that people know well, you know, if you've been in the SolidWorks community, you know about the SolidWorks Dudes Group Network, which, you know, basically it has this sort of illustrious tradition of tons of volunteer group leaders, you know, coming together from, from different parts of the world uh, to lead user groups, which are basically chances for you to get together, typically with people in your local geography, but even that's changed so much in the past couple of years, you know, kind of going online a bit more. Um, people could serve in your local geography to take in, you know, live presentations, sort of tips and tricks on, you know, different ways of doing things in SOLIDWORKS. And of course, you know, networking, and of course, you know, typically we have pizza there and, and stuff like that since Love it's usually the work and people are hungry. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we have that, right? And 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 those are still going strong, um, you know, with, with tons of still, tons of volunteer group leaders uh, around the world. Um, and, uh, you know, when I came into this role, I, I sort of looked at the landscape and thought, you know, what's sort of missing? You know, what's missing as far as, you know, at a program level? And I thought one of the things that was missing as we kind of look back at the past 20 years was we didn't really have sort of a home for, for everyone else, right? Like, you know, there's tons of people in the SOLIDWORKS community that are sort of volunteering our time in online and offline ways. You know, you might be leading a business after school program. You might, you know, be making content online. Um, you're, you know, you, you probably are also, you know, certified with, with a number of certifications in, in the SOLIDWORKS certification program. Um, so all these sort of factors where I looked at it and I was like, you know, what kind of makes someone, if I said a champion, you know, what sort of makes someone a champion? We, we sort of outlined, you know, these, these various criteria, which you can see on solidworks.com slash champions, um, that sort of, you know, goes through that stuff. So um, I see your, you know, your look, you're showing your screen. Let me show, drop your screen over here so everybody can see it. Yeah. So let's, let's start just from the, from the top here. So you sure. can actually this, if you just go to solidworks.com slash champions, um, basically you'll get to this page. So you'll see the, the blue call to action button there is apply now. 
Um, but it also says, you know, kind of gives you an idea of, um, you know, the types of users that the Champions program is meant to, to cater to. This is mostly an industry program. Um, there are definitely some exceptions to that case where we have, you know, a, a couple of students and we have, um, you know, even even some some VARES as well, um, so it, who, who, are, who have been truly exceptional, you know, for example, like Ellen Varkatsu, which, you know, a lot of us, who a lot of us know. Sure. Um, in the program but it's it's primarily Large assembly kind of wizard just a wizard yeah. yeah um but you can kind of look through you know uh, some spots sort of uh you know requirements uh, as well as benefits of, of being in the champions program um and then you see here the apply now button so things things here like you can see like new product trials like certain opportunities that we try to make for for champions only you get uh, a bag speaking. of goodies i always see pictures of people on linkedin you, you get like, swag. All this stuff yeah all i mean cool what stuff what, i got what better way to sort of advertise a program, right, than than someone being able to say like, "Here's this awesome swag I got as part of being in the Champions program." For sure. But but I can say as as much as that's a nice thing, and I love that people love that stuff. Like I think that's just part of why people want to be in it. Um, you know, there's that. There's things like you, know, you get like a digital badge, right, as part of the uh, the digital badges program at at Deso System. So you can actually have a page that says you're a champion, just like you have a page that says you're a CSWE if you're a CSWE. Nice. Um, but we actually put in here, like, if you look, there's a, there's a full application you can fill out from really anywhere in the world. Um, but if you look down here, you know, just to kind of give you an idea of how we kind of run the program, um, you can even see here, like, what are the reasons why you're excited to be in the champions program? We actually use this stuff. Um, so for example, we, we take inventory of, you know, people, how many of you actually want to be in the champions program because you want to meet other champions, you know, people who are like you in all of these ways. You know, closer relationship with the Solaris team, chance to take part in community builds and projects. Um, you know, having your data set used for R&D product introduction, like those sorts of things. Like Eric, Eric Beatty, right? Who's, uh, who's, who's very familiar with that from, from having the OMAX data set uh, as part of what's new uh, not too long ago. Uh, getting involved with marketing. So all these different things that I can say, each one of these has been exercised and, and the program has been around for, I think about 10 months now. Um, so, uh, I'm always trying to, and we're always trying to sort of, whether it's coming from a champion or coming from us internally, just like pump this program full of opportunities for like sort of the elite of the elite in terms of community. I love it, man. I think it's a, it's such a cool thing. And, it, and, you know, like you said, I mean, this is not something that's been around for very long. Uh, I remember, you know, when I was coming up, there certainly wasn't anything like this. And I think it's a great way to recognize those people that, you know, even in the images you have here on this uh, front dashboard, it's like I recognize almost everyone in all of those images because they've done so much to help the community. They've spent so much time, whether it's on the message boards or participating in like Magic yeah. Wheelchair or just being at the World Conference and just being enthusiastic, but also, <laughs> you know, volunteering to be ambassadors to, to help right. new, new people who came to SolidWorks World for the first time, kind of help guide them through what to expect, you know, just always giving back to the community. So I think I think it's so great that now we have a program to recognize those those people i have to say too um you know even even you know we have so many great people featured in this graphic which even as i was i i, I made this graphic and i was i was kind of putting these little pictures together and i was like wow like look at this like group of people um it was almost like early validation that like this thing should exist right it's like yeah. <laughs> just just looking at these people um you know all of you um and i you know but I, I would say too, one one of the, the the great things about the Champions program and how it's built is it's largely been partly because of how it's had to be, you know, because of the pandemic and everything, but partly um, because it's ideally, I think how it should be, is it's become a very global program. Um, so we have almost 40 countries represented in the Champions program today. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, I think a lot of the people you see here, you know, they may be from not all of them, right? But you see, you know, see people from the UK, but a lot of people are from the US here, right? If you look at the, if you look at some of these faces, um, I would say when we when we kind of get to 3D Experience World 2022, you know, hopefully a lot of us can travel to Atlanta uh, to kind of take part in that. We'll have a ton of a whole new flight of pictures and media, and um, you know, you, you'll continue to see the face of SolidWorks and what it is to diversify geographically. Maybe a Champions Only event. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe like a movie Maybe. or something. We'll all watch a Maybe. movie. Maybe. We'll non solid blow it related. Out. <laughs> no, we'll have to. I mean, we'll have to blow it out though. Like yeah. to be serious. Like you know, we couldn't be in person this past world. Um, so for 2022, again, like you said, with it being 
the first time that so many champions can get together as champions like it'll have to be it'll have to be pretty big yeah or maybe a special live tournament since they're all solidworks gurus i mean who knows although they're not all they're not all necessarily like heavy users a lot of people who contribute to the community are are doing things in in many different ways it's not just about being like a solidworks expert true but i mean like we have to like we have to do something like that yeah like you sure. know too tall toby like that was not a thing really so much last time right um that we were in person at 2020 so it, i was thinking like even if uh how many of you have seen the movie uh the social network like yeah. we should do one of those hackathon type things like oh yeah just just binge modeling like, like all night binge modeling <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Sean. Yeah, I'm gonna flip insane. back to I'm gonna flip back to the uh, uh, PowerPoint because we got one yeah, more sure. we got one more challenge here today, you know. But I, and also just because I want to see if uh, Kirby got the answer right, because he I don't know if you know his his uh, technique. Uh, Kirby and Johnny were guests on the show a few weeks ago, and he just looks at the print and then figures out what the answer is. <laughs> That's technique. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't he doesn't even model it. He just looks at it and just kind of figures out what the answer is and. Uh, it's a pretty solid technique, I think. That's so good. I guess we'll find out officially here in just a moment, right? Find out how solid it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So, yep, so Kirby yep, redacted and then adjusted to 1,000. Oh, he just missed a zero. That's all it was. So 1,076 grams <laughs> as the uh, uh, first answer. Uh, let's see here. Duh, duh, duh. Toby, what the heck are we looking at? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe I like overclicked through the uh, PowerPoint as we were <laughs> as we were doing that. All right, cool, cool. All right, good deal, good deal. Let's see here. All right, so here we go. It looks like the first answer that came in here was from Parjitter W one zero nine zero dot two. That's what we'll call that one zero nine zero. So two different answers here. We have the one thousand seventy six. We have the one zero nine zero. We have one thousand five from Tim Z. All righty, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Eric says that he faxed in his champion's application, but still waiting to hear back from it. Okay, that's good to know. So check out your fax, your facsimile machine. <laughs> we got Garvin coming in here with 1094. We got Parjitter W coming in with 1090.1. We got, let's see here, keep going down through here. We got Ano coming in with 1136. Not as many answers uh, for sheet metal and, and a lot of variety here. Ed coming in with 1093. Nicely done, Ed. Uh, Rodrigo coming in 1041.5. Theodore C coming in with 1100. And let's see here. Ano revising to 1035. Uh, David coming in with 605.9. And that may have been from the previous one. All right, cool. So not as many answers coming in from sheet metal. Uh, it's a little bit more of a you know a, a specific tool set you, you, you maybe need to know. But uh, if we roll back here to the very first answer, it was Kirby 1067. Let's see if Kirby got it right at 10, oh, sorry, 1076. So the correct answer is 1090 grams. So Kirby, you were so close. You were just about 14 grams off, which I think is pretty darn impressive. Uh, that is but really impressive. <laughs> just from looking at it, that's all you need to do is look at it. But the correct answer is from our good friend Parjitter W one zero nine zero grams. So GG to Parj. If you guys want to all give a GG to Parj, and hey, while you're in there in the chat, if you want to hit the like button, uh, I'm sure that that would be another way of letting Parj know that you're that you're giving him a good game. So smash that like button. Uh, be sure to give Parj a good game in the chat. And guys, we got one more challenge here today. One more point is up for grabs. No clean sweep today, uh, but this is actually going to be the uh, final challenge here of our season three. Final challenge for season three coming out here. All righty. So, Parge, that's four points for you, bro. You're locked in. Nicely done. Nicely done. Congrats. Congrats, yeah. All right, let's go to our final challenge here. Final challenge of season three. And I hope you guys are ready for this one. This one is going to be called Thick Space. Thick Space. Let me flip over to full screen here. Three, two, one, go. The final challenge of season three is now live. 
So we're we're back to inches here, Sean. Everybody loves IPS. They all say to me, how come we don't do more models in IPS? We love IPS. Nobody uses MMGS. I'm sure. <laughs> Everybody says IPS is the way to go. It's so much easier. Uh, you know, 16th, 30 seconds. That's what people like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's what the people want. It's what the, pe it's the people uh, have spoken. That's what they want. Yeah, I was talking to R and D the other day. He said <laughs> the, the, the 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 biggest enhancement request is just to get rid of millimeters from the software. Yeah, I mean, why even why <laughs> even have that in there? Nobody uses it. Nobody wants it. So, uh, so you know, your wish is my command. The answer to this one is going to be <laughs> xx dot xx pounds. Uh, Kirby taking a while on this one has not answered yet. Um, I was going to say. Tony, oh, there we go. Think, like, there we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> two seconds later yep um you think like there was a phenomenon on the last print where like people saw how quickly kirby came up with the answer and it was almost like demoralizing <laughs> like they were just like i can never do it this quickly <laughs> he's, yeah he's so <laughs> fast i i don't get how fast he's just so darn fast his technique yeah. is uh is definitely the fastest so uh <laughs> i hope you guys have had enough time to look at this thing uh be sure to look at all the views including the isometric and reverse isometric view and be sure to take a screen capture uh patty says no ips is bad it makes no sense <laughs> i think there's probably one or two people out there who agree with with patty uh yeah do you guys perhaps. agree with patty my kid uh, my kid even said to me last night why are you drawing an wow inches? Okay. Oh wow. All right. Just amazing. So there we go. Uh, drinking sure a, the, yeah. a, a fine IPS while modeling this. Job. A fine IPS. Yeah, it's very nice. A double maybe. <laughs> double IPS. Double IPS. <laughs> Love those on a on a nice Saturday. Well, I just want to remind everybody that uh, we do have another special guest next week. None other than Dan Wagner, who we've mentioned a couple of times here. He's going to be the guest next week. Uh, just like we did last season, we're going to go through. We're going to figure out what the pairing is for the tournament. Uh, very excited to have Dan on here next week. So be sure to tune in next week. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any challenges next week. If there are any, maybe I'll throw in one just for just for fun. Uh, but I don't think there's going to be challenges next week. I think next week is just going to be setting up the tournament, ironing out the tournament. Uh, if there's any ties for the tournament uh, as people respond, we will have to figure out what we're going to do about those. Uh, but I think we're just going to kind of iron out the final uh, final elements of the tournament. So, Sean, I want to say to you, business strategy, go to market, design thinking, communities, storytelling. These are words that I think about when I think about Sean O'Neill. Do you just, you just look at my uh, my redesigned LinkedIn page? <laughs> I may have. I uh, I think these are uh, these are a, an interesting collection of words. Maybe you could tell us how these words came together and and uh, what you uh, what you what you feel about that set of words and that image that I've got up on the slide. Uh, well, I think I mean in terms of what I do here at SolidWorks, I mean there's there's a ton of it's kind of almost like it's like this big playground, right? Um, and I, yeah, like being able to have the, the champions program, the influencer program. And I think there's probably even a lot of stuff that, you know, we're, we're doing here that, you know, even if it's behind the scenes that there's, there's really not much reason to, to kind of talk about usually. Um, I think one, one thing that's been pretty exciting in terms of, um, in terms of some go to market stuff. And I think people are really excited about it here in this chat, I would imagine is the, uh, the 3D experience solvers for makers. So there's a lot of stuff. And I, I was joking around with um, with uh, Eric Haddad from 3D Hour Adventures. Uh, he was he was on main stage at 3D Experience World 2020. And um, we were kind of talking about how, um, you know, we, we, we did the big announcement at 3D Experience World 2021 about the makers offer. Um, and, you know, there's, there's always, when we have these announcements at World, there can be sort of almost, uh, a lull, right? If there's if there's a couple months between, you know, when the announcement happens, that in in the future in that year something will occur, uh, and when it actually does. Um, so the maker offer is, is set to come out this August. Okay. Um, but there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. What is the maker's about... offer? Just so that uh, in case people aren't familiar with this, I know it was announced at the World Conference, but what is the, the yeah. maker's offer? It's a good question. So um, the uh, so this was announced uh, by G GP. 
uh, day one of 3D Experience World 2021. Um, and it's been a long time coming. So 3D Experience Solvers for Makers is basically, uh, you could think of it as a package of SOLIDWORKS for hobbyist maker personal projects, right? So it's $99 a year, or you can do $9.99 a month. Um, okay. These figures are in USD. Pretty good price. Um, yeah, so you get 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS Professional, which is basically SOLIDWORKS connected to the cloud with a, with a couple other of, of add-ins and services, much like SOLIDWORKS Professional. Uh, you get 3D Creator, which contains X Design. And you get 3D Sculptor, which contains X shape for like sub D push yeah. and pull modeling. Push pull so, play modeling. I like that one. Yeah. So, um, and you can, and you actually get all of that uh, for that price. Um, so, all of it's bundled into that, that either $99 USD a year or $9.99 per month price. Okay. Um, yeah. So, we're doing a lot kind of in the background. Like, I, I know sometimes people see the, see the term, like, which I hope you guys aren't getting bored, but. You see the term like go to market there's a lot of kind of planning for you know even like the content stuff like we did we did a video recently uh with the solar's champion actually jeremy fielding uh where we i'm not sure if you can see my screen i'm gonna put be. this over here yeah so we can see what you're showing just give me one sec go ahead proceed so jeremy actually made uh this project so we we support jeremy's projects um since Jer jeremy's in the influencer program so sometimes we'll sponsor some of his builds and he generally just loves kind of using SOLIDWORKS, um, but he, he actually made a, a seven axis uh, robot from scratch. Okay. Uh, so an wow. industrial style robot, yeah, for his shop. So you can see it, I'm, I'm just kind of scrubbing a little bit in the timeline, um, but you can see this here. Um, so this is this is the full build. Um, he's, still, he's still working on some of the robotics programming for it, but like you can see like in this component here. Um, so if we kind of scrub over to where we see SOLIDWORKS CAD. So this component actually wasn't designed using SOLIDWORKS 3 CAD. You can see very clearly through the interface that it's there, um, but it was designed using uh, using 3D Creator, using X-Shape. Um, oh, wow. Okay, yeah, so for so, all that so, like swoopy lofty stuff, he's using, or he's using 3D Creator for CAD in a browser. I mean, it looks like both he, there. He's using, so here he has, so he has the like SOLIDWORKS components in here and he's using X shape, using 3D Creator um, here. Sculptor. Like, so to, uh, yeah, sorry, 3D Sculptor. Okay. I'm getting kind of mixed up. So 3D Sculptor, or I guess some people would say that the X shape app, like you can see here to make, like you said, the, the swoopy sort of, uh, you know, encasing here. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't know too, like you can actually take that shape and actually put it like Jeremy did inside of SOLIDWORKS CAD. Um, and this stuff's pretty interesting because Jeremy's kind of showing, you know, even though this isn't like the, like he doesn't launch the software and it doesn't say, you know, 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS for makers because that's not out yet. These are the types of projects, larger or smaller, you know, personal hobbyist maker projects that you can sort of begin to venture in for at a very reasonable price point. Um, so when we say go to market, I think the exciting part and kind of the relevant part when we talk about, you know, talk to, to you guys, this audience, is we're trying to sort of serve out relevant stories to keep you guys excited and aware of the fact that this very sort of affordable personal copy of SOLIDWORKS is coming very soon. Wow. So and he yeah. th so he built that whole robot in, in SOLIDWORKS with, you know, augmenting some of the design in X shape for the sub D modeling. And then what did he do? Did he 3D print those coverings? Yeah, you're right. So he said these are usually cast parts, um, but he he actually just 3D printed the the coverings. Okay. Um, and he he says as much in in the, um, you know, he he still has like a a job where he's just he's just doing you know engineering work um, off off the channel, but he said you know typically, and this is the case with a lot of people, right? It's like if I'm looking to make sort of these more organic swoopy, like you said, shapes. Um, you know, unless you're kind of more familiar with surface modeling tools as you are, right, Toby? Um, I love surface they, modeling. They can, they can be a little intimidating, right? Um, so having this in your toolkit to be able to kind of pull up, to put into your SOLIDWORKS 3D CAD models or to just make, you know, a model just, again, by itself for its own purpose um, can be potentially really useful. And it's something that we, we just, we haven't really had in, in SOLIDWORKS 3D CAD. Right, yeah, I mean, I know there's a third party add-in called Power Surfacing. Right. And even if you are, yeah. if, even if you are an expert with surfacing in SOLIDWORKS, you could still get benefit from 
an additional product that makes that surfacing easy. And that's exactly what we're seeing with a program like X Shape, where you've got SolidWorks. SolidWorks works awesome, but when it comes to the swoopy lofty stuff, even if you're an expert in surfacing, a subtle little change can cause a lot of things to fail. And in the world of consumer product design, it's very important that you have curvature continuity, that there's no uh, deviation. Like when there's a deviation in the amount of curvature, that it's a smooth deviation, that it's not just like a hard break, like it's a radius one inch and then it becomes a radius five inches. Because you can you can actually see those changes if you are holding the product under lights. Um, you can see where that radius is changing. Even though it's a ta there's tangency, you can see where that radius change takes place. And so um, that's something that you fight a lot when you're doing surface modeling. And what's nice about, about X-Shape in particular is that it maintains that curvature continuity as you're pushing and pulling the nodes on the uh, different surfaces. So, it, it, you know, it's a great point that you're making there that, that even if you have solvers and even if you are a surfacing expert, you could still, you know, create two models side by side and using surfacing, it might take eight hours and using X-Shape, it might take one hour. And so then, you know, that's going to be a pretty big benefit, especially when you can relatively easily get that file out of X shape and right back down into SolidWorks. You know, it's a, yeah. for me, usually the way I do it is from X shape, I'll just do like a save as uh, 3d XML or SLD XML. And then you can just bring it right into SolidWorks and work with it in SolidWorks. It's just that easy. Yeah. So there's, and there's also a connector, right, Toby, like yeah. that you can use um, yeah. that we, that we have that if you, and by the way, if you have 3d sculptor, like, let's say you bought it, like Toby's saying for an industry use case, which you can, you can just buy a 3D sculptor and it comes with that connector. Um, so it would just sort of be able, you'd be able to install that and it would it would kind of plug right into your, your seat of SOLIDWORKS. Um, I wanted to say too, like on this video, if you look at the description, so we actually have, if you go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash Jeremy SW. Um, so basically I'll click through it here. It just redirects to this page. So this is a very simple splash page, but basically what it does is you can just sign up for alerts. Um, nice. so if you're already following like SOLIDWORKS Twitter, SOLIDWORKS Facebook, um, you might find little value in this, but if you're worried about missing when the product becomes like generally available, um, you might just want to sign up for this, you know, it's just kind of just making it so that you'll get email alerts on like any product updates. So you're showing us, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Fielding's page here. Are there other, mm -hmm. you know, maybe could you tell us about like maybe one or two other, uh, people who are on the influencer program or people who are using SolidWorks and creating cool projects? Cause I love seeing this kind of stuff, but it's kind of uh, disappointing when like I see somebody who's doing something really cool like this and then they're using a different CAD package. So, you know, what I really want is I want to see people who are like, in this case, this guy's building a robot in his garage and then he's using yeah. SolidWorks to make it happen. What are some other channels you could recommend to our audience? Yeah, for sure. No, um, we, so there's a couple other ones. Um, it's kind of an understatement. One I have put up here is how to mechatronics. So, um, definitely subscribe, uh, to how to mechatronics. If you're looking for some SOLIDWORKS content, I'll say that, uh, we're working on a really, I'm working with the channel owner, uh, the John on a really interesting project, uh, that's going to show off some capabilities of SOLIDWORKS and X design together. Um, but we actually already released one um, where you can kind of see uh, you can see SOLIDWORKS and XDesign kind of working together here too. Of course, the ad but, ad wall. <laughs> but uh, you know, this is this is a pick and place robot that he made, and this actually just sort of fits on his desk. Um, but he programmed it with Arduino. You can see, like, he basically goes through the full build. All the components wow. uh, basically are three D printed. Um, but he used uh, 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS to, to actually do this. You can see kind of uses a bit of like the project planning just to kind of map out his steps. Um, so this, he's, he's a really, really skilled creator. Um, so we'll be coming out. You can, you can check out this one. It only came out in October, so it's not old or anything. Okay. Um, check this one out. Um, and we're, we're going to be releasing another video kind of promoting again, the, the maker edition soon. It's kind of um, cool. Cause then you can see everything you can do just with that one you know, that one product, that one solution. Yeah, yeah, yeah and that's that's the benefit because it's not it's not a, like the maker thing. The, the cool part about it is you're taking like very powerful, typically used in the industry tools and you're just sort of making them available to people at a, at a much easier price point for, again, these sort of maker hobbyist style projects. So then uh, just because we're running out of time here, do you have maybe like one more you could show us? Yeah, definitely. So this is a bigger one. Um, so we do work with, uh, sometimes like you'll, like I'll get messages like where SOLIDWORKS is kind of in the wild um, or, uh, you know, this person should be using SOLIDWORKS and 
of course it's great when we're already kind of planning to work with them or you know we already are working with them one channel we do support and we'll continue to, to work with in a variety of ways is the hacksmith um so the hacksmith's huge right it's like right. 13 12 13 million subscribers whatever um this video actually just came out for those of you that are gaming fans like you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Mortal Kombat franchise <laughs> uh but you can see he's making uh James here is making Scorpion Spear and uh this cat this cat software probably looks pretty familiar sure uh, to you guys but uh I'm excited to watch this I actually haven't watched this video yet okay uh, but yeah it came up on my feed and I was like wow YouTube really really knows me <laughs> so <laughs> Hacksmith Industries uh Jeremy Fielding and uh what was the other one Mechatronics how to mechatronics how to mechatronics so i'll be sure to get those links into the description here uh so that you guys can you know you can quickly get to just making a note here so you can quickly get to some of those uh episodes where you can see people using solidworks like you said in the wild and actually coming up with these pretty cool ideas these pretty cool devices so yeah, absolutely I, i'm gonna jump back to the powerpoint sean uh i can't believe that we've already been talking for an hour uh it's the, insane the time goes by so fast and it's always so good to talk to you um and you know for we're, sure we're not going away yet i just wanted to uh flip back so i still got you on the webcam uh let's take a look at our final challenge here our final challenge of uh of april of the season really final challenge of season three i gotta give a huge shout out to justin louts i see justin in the justin chat Lass, as well uh huge data management guy and so of course he's right away asking if the maker package comes with some sort of data management so basically everything in 3d experience is built on data management with data management in mind so the short answer is yes uh, you do have the ability to collaborate uh, in the cloud with your coworkers or with your co-collaborators in the case of the uh, hobbyist license it'll be with your co-collaborators uh, but yes everything in 3d experience is, is uh, uh, everything at least model related is built on a role that that does data management it's called the collaborative industry innovator role just in case uh, any of my bosses are watching. All right, so here we go. So waypoint number three, Kirby comes in with the very first answer, 23.69. Um, the correct answer was actually 23.8. So once again, he got really close. No, I'm just kidding. That's not the correct answer. Uh, but Kirby, nicely done. You do have the very first answer uh, input. Let's see here. Let's see what else we got as we go down here. Tim Z coming in at 0 0.0975. Uh, Parge is letting him know that here you can see Parge got it and Parge is saying hey you're in the wrong format there uh, let's see here 3167 coming in with 10.256 pounds uh, so we would round that up to 10.26 uh, Gerben coming in right behind him at 10.26 nicely done Gerben Tim Z revising to 10.26 I love when we see this convergence on the answers uh, makes me feel like some of these people are probably getting this correct let's continue down through here Tim Z typed in density. I think you've done that before, Tim. So uh, uh, congratulations on figuring out that you had it incorrect with density. Uh, let's see here. Rodrigo coming in with 10.26. Nicely done, Rodrigo. I loved reading this comment from Tampa Roar Station. It says, maybe next year we can have the have an old boy category, plus 45 years old, earlier SolidWorks versions, and, of course, modeled in inches. These young guys are too fast. Tampa Roar Station, I think that is an excellent idea, and I think we can definitely make that happen. We can even make it thematic, like you have to model up a cane or a walker or something. Uh, let's see here. Gunpowder Green going to a 10.307. Theodore C, 10.26. Nicely done. Theodore, nicely done. Gunpowder Green as well. All righty. Let's see here. What else we got? David coming in with 10.373. Nicely done, David. Uh, we've got... Patty coming in with 10.603. Ed coming in with 9.98. Nicely done, Ed. Revising to 9.97. I love that accuracy. Anno coming in with 10.02. Table 3.6, 10.07. Uh, Falconelli, what's up, Falconelli? Good to see you in here again. Coming in with 10.5. Question for Sean. How does supporting YouTube creators compare to more traditional sponsorship, e.g. supporting university, formula, student teams, BattleBot entrance, etc.? So I guess that he's asking you with regards to the influencer program like how like is that something that you would apply for the influencer program or is that something that more that you guys kind of reach out to the influencers oh you're muted sean thanks I, you should have waited till i was done oh yeah <laughs> oh, oh wait you're muted the whole time <laughs> um no so yeah, i was saying it was a good question um and uh you know, the influencer program is kind of like the champions program in that, you know, I kind of created it to fill a gap. You know, we didn't really have anything official 
that supported really, really high level sort of content creators online. Um, and that's specifically what, you know, it, it's kind of aimed to do. Um, in terms of your question though, um, in terms of how we support, you know, Formula SAE, um, and uh, I think you mentioned BattleBots as well. Uh, we do support those teams um, through, uh, you know, ways of sponsorship. Um, but that's not something I individually do, um, but I definitely work closely with, with people who do. So um, yeah, I guess re definitely re reach out to me. I can kind of connect to you if, if it's something that you're interested in looking into. Um, Toby, I guess, what's the best way? Do you, should I just put my email address in the chat or do you just want to? They can just ask Jesse. <laughs> I don't think they're going to be able to ask Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we can uh, we can definitely get you in touch with Sean. Don't uh, You don't have to put your email in the chat, Sean, but. but uh, whatever works. Or if it, you want yeah, to, yeah, matter. whatever. You do whatever you want. Uh, I, like I guess I, the reason why I asked is because, like, does YouTube actually let me do that? Like, it might, it, yeah, it might. it might not. We can put it in the description, you know. Yeah, that's cool. Contact Sean. Yeah. yeah, feel free. Just contact me and I can connect to you. Um, for example, uh, education team works at Formula, S Formula SA teams. Um, and uh, again, working with them closely on a lot of stuff. And then uh, Cliff Medling uh, is a big BattleBots enthusiast. And he works on the SolidWorks uh, brand marketing team. So I can put you in contact with him. Yeah, shout out to Cliff. He's also got a great podcast. So if you guys want to listen to some... Yeah, Born to yeah, Design. Yeah, if you have some found time. I usually listen to it when I'm like mowing the lawn. Or uh, you know, doing something where I can just listen and I and I don't really have to pay too much attention to what I'm doing. Uh, that's a great a great podcast to check out. He's got some wonderful stories with different people who have used SolidWorks over the years. Uh, so let's keep going here. Table three six coming in with ten dot two six. Nicely done. Table three six. Uh, Cam says, "Am I too late for the festivities? Uh, you're not too late for the final wrap up, Cam. You're right on time." Uh, let's see here. What else we got? Uh, you're confirmed in the tournament in any case. Let's see here. Please provide a license of SolidWorks 95 for the category of 45+. plus. Well, speaking of SolidWorks 95, if you <laughs> want to go back and see SolidWorks 95, uh, check out Eric Beatty and the uh, the Seattle Power Users Group 25th Anniversary Meetup because Jeff Setzer did an amazing demo of SolidWorks so 95. Cool. It was so cool, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Da -da -da. All right. We got 10.44 from Patty. Nicely done. Patty, well done. Uh, revising to 10.26. Nicely done. Nicely done. All right. Awesome. Cool. Well, let me roll back here and see who got the correct answer. See if it was, in fact, Kirby. The correct answer is 10.26. So nicely done to everyone who submitted an answer. Nicely done to everyone who got it right. And it looks like the first correct answer came in from none other than 3167, old friend of the show. Very nicely done, 3167. 10.256, 10.26, uh, congratulations, 3167. He was the runner-up finalist in the tournament last year, uh, and he got that one correct as well. Uh, I, th I feel like 3167 might have uh, said that he cannot do the tournament, um, and just because I happen to know that information, I might, I might actually pass that point on to Gerben. Uh, because I know that 3167 had said that maybe he can't make the tournament. So, Gerben, in an unprecedented move, you might inherit that point. But I'm going to let 3167 let me know down in the bottom. If you know you can't make it on May 1st, just let me know, 3167. I thought I had read that earlier in the chat. And if that's the case, then congratulations to Gerben, who's going to inherit that point uh, for getting the next one. But like I said, I'll wait to hear from 3167 in the chat. Uh, regardless, I want to say good game to 3167 for getting that point or getting that answer correct i want to say good game to everybody who entered today uh give a gg to everyone gerben if you got on the board today and ended up getting two points i want to give you a huge shout out and give you a huge congratulations catapulting yourself into the the potential of being in the tournament i want to remind everybody if you haven't um 367 lo i did say that actually uh yes that will sort out the tie eighth for eighth place too yep that will start off the tie for eighth place too okay yeah so if that's the case uh let me know uh let me know 3167 i think you're confirming there is that correct uh you cannot make the tournament if it is then gerben will get the point let me know in the chat i know this is a little unprecedented but this is how we roll here on two tall toby <laughs> so good game to everyone thank you so much to all the people who tuned in for the first time today thank you of course to our special guest sean o'neill uh, you were awesome. You uh, huge thank you to everyone in the chat. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed what you saw today. 
Uh, congratulations to everyone. 3167 has confirmed that he is not going to make it. So that means uh, super congratulations to Gerben, who got uh, two points on today's tournament. Be sure to go to twotalltoby.com and go to the, the tab that says contact and just send me a message that says, uh, yep, I'm in for May 1st and include your email. And that way I can send you all the logistical information. Sean, I'm going to put you on webcam again here a little bit bigger. I want to say special thank you to you, Sean. You were a wonderful guest as always. You're an amazing member of the community. You do so much to help the community. I uh, love the champions program. I love, uh, uh I give you a, I, I tip my hat to you, sir, for coming up with that champions program. I think it's really worked out well, and I'm excited to see all the new champions at the next world conference. Absolutely. No, thank you, Toby. Thank you to everyone. And uh, I, I try to make a point to say this every time. Um, you know, I try to add a bit of structure. I think that's that's all the Champions program is. It's adding a bit of structure to, you know, all the awesome things that, you know, you guys are doing out there in the community. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's, that's at the end of the day, that's what makes it special. So Such a great community. That. Well, guys, if you guys enjoyed having Sean in here today, put a one in the chat. If you enjoyed your time here today, put a one in the chat. And uh, Sean, if you want to hang out, I know that everybody hangs out afterwards a little bit in the chat. Uh, but for me, it is afternoon. I think it's time for me to go and eat some lunch and get some yard work done. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to flip back to my full screen. Thank you so much, Sean. And uh, thank, you. Thank, thank you so much to everyone out there in the chat. It's been great seeing everybody in here again. Next week, we're going to figure out who's going up against who in our eight-man tournament. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in this week. Let people know about the tournament. I'll send out some promotional info this week so you can share that with everybody. Uh, get them to put that on their calendars. Uh, let your friends know. Let your families know. And we will see everyone next week. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.